People often say to me, Rob, you have an interesting life. Are there extremes? Yes, this morning I cut my head open at the tip while, while dropping off some large pieces of cardboard that the recycling people refuse to take. And this afternoon, I am in the home of Robbie Williams. Hello. Don't forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. Do you know what? I would have taken that cardboard off you. Genuinely would have taken I, I need cardboard. I would have brought it if you'd said. No, I know, yeah, because I, I, on my Instagram, I'm doing these Yes, signs. you are. You're coming along and you're... I skip oh, yes. and then I do a thing. And um, I need cardboard. So if I'd have known that, you wouldn't have hurt your head and then the cardboard would have gone to further use. But I was walking through town the other day and there was car big like somebody put cardboard out for the bins. Yeah. And I just thought it had it, just been too weird. Robbie Williams. Yes. Nicking empty boxes. Can I ask you a question? I wish you would. Okay. Are you so, going to keep your feet? I'm, I'm very, I mean, it's your house. You can do what you want, but you've got your shoes on that. Are those just indoor trainers? Do you know when you're at school? Yeah. And the teachers used to say, would you do that at your own house? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, it turns out I actually would. So I am. See, I would never have put my feet. See, I was, I think, I think that, you know, I was a rule follower. You can, and you're more than welcome to put your feet up. Can I? Do, yeah, yeah, please do. But I, but my shoes, I've been outdoors. It was tipping down when I got out of the taxi. I, no, I can't do it, Rob. Seriously? I can't do it because if I put my foot, oh God, I want to do it. Please do it. I insist. Oh, it doesn't feel right. No, do it. Please do it. I, I want at my house uh, always to be a place where you can put your feet up. We can take our shoes off and just go socks. Hey, now, you... hold on. That's a little bit too rock and roll for me, Robbie. I like your. I, I like what you've done with your sock. Well, I've worn it. Yeah, are you a big sock fan or not? I like socks. Yeah. They're a chance for a little gaiety in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, um, are you in trouble if you get called Robert? <laughs> when I was, some of my Welsh relatives still call me Robert because I was a Robert. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I've never been a Robbie. Uh, there's a story about that. But, you know, when you are called Robert, does it feel comforting? I like it. Yeah. I like it. And, and I worry that if I'm ever knighted, I don't think Sir Rob sounds good, but Sir Robert, I yeah. think, is it, it smacks of Robin Hood, Sir Robert of Loxley, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. doesn't it? Whereas Sir Rob, I don't like that at all. You'd be the first Sir Rob. Yeah, but that wouldn't comfort me because it doesn't roll off. It rolls off the tongue too easy, doesn't it? Yeah. So you might think my name is Ob. A shortening of Obi Wan. Sir, Sir Ob. Sir Ob. Ob, come in, sit down. So, so um, when we were, when I was in Take That, that's where I know you from. Yes, you. Yeah, when I, when I was in Take That, in the early days, Nigel Martin Smith, the manager, came up with interesting backstories for us all, which weren't true. And um, you know, mine was I'd been in Brookside. <laughs> which I hadn't. Right. Uh, and like the boys, Howard and Jason were in a dance troupe together and Mark and Gary were in a band together called Cutest Rush. And uh, we, so we sort of like had this meeting where we were given our backstories like um, dancing spies or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in this meeting, he, I was told that my name was now not Rob or Robert, but it was now Robbie. Oh. And I hated it. So that was imposed upon you? Yeah, because, oh. yeah. Uh, and how do you feel about the name Robbie? Not mine, not, be, not it being me, but if you were given, if, you, if somebody out of nowhere when you were 17 went, you're Robbie now. Yeah, no, I've I know I never felt like a Robbie. The only Robbies I've ever known in my life are uh, you. I don't really know you, but I mean, I, 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 you, and and there used to be a miniature Schnauzer that lived next door who was called Robbie, right, and was a delight, right. Uh, and I, I was I was a big a big fan of of you, but also 
of, of Robbie the Schnauzer. Robbie the miniature, miniature schnauzer. schnauzer. He's a big for a miniature schnauzer. I, I sometimes felt he was probably just a schnauzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, um, I was called Robbie by a girl that I fancied that was in the year above me, mm. two years above me. Two years above you at school? Yeah, I fancied her. She didn't Mrs. fancy me Robinson. back. She oh. she didn't fancy me back. Oh, okay. And she was, oh, Robbie. And it was like the mm. condescending talking down. So when I was given the name Robbie, I absolutely hated it. But now I like it because there is a a Rob, a Robert, and a Robbie. And where will we find each of those people? Who would we find in this house? A Rob and a Robert. <laughs> We'd find Robbie on the stage. Is there a Rob Brydon on the stage? Uh, well, I don't understand the question. What do you mean? Well, you know, there is a... There's a, My act is full of bravado yeah. and vim and vigour. Is that what it is? And, you know... Old-fashioned phrase, but very welcome. Yeah, and, you know, you know massive narcissism yeah. and, you know... And I would like to think... Yeah. That that's not me off stage. Yeah. So there's a definite me on stage and a, oh, right. definite, okay. a definite me off stage. I think there's less of a difference for me, but but still a difference. You know, obviously you've got to be, you've got to deliver, haven't you? But with you, I mean, I cannot begin to imagine. You've just done a huge show, haven't you, two days ago in Singapore? Yeah. Right? Shoo, you fly out there, big time difference. Yeah. Shoom, you fly back. And in between, how many people? 50,000. Right, okay. And it's all on your shoulders. You, you've got the band, of course, and the production values, but they're there for Robbie Williams. So I can't imagine what, that, what that's like to step up to that. I, 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 big thinkings this, this weekend, actually, about all of that. Cause you get on a flight, fly 12 hours, mm. and then there's six hours ahead or six hours behind. I can't remember which one. And I, I find, um, traveling and jet lag does make me vulnerable, does make me emotional. I saw you put that on Instagram and that really rang a bell with me. Because it does, doesn't it? Just throws you out. Yeah, completely. It's just like confusing uh, and yeah, uh, emotional, vulnerable, all of those things. Get on a plane and then you sort of try to go to sleep and you either do or you don't. And then whether you do or you don't, you're still getting up to perform in front of 50,000 people and your head, my headspace is actually all over the place. And then I got up and the, the show was great. The audience were very, very loving. And um, I'm about eight or nine songs in and my body just went, night, night now. Go night, nights now. No, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, oh, no. Sit down. Mm, mm, <laughs> that's enough now. <laughs> sit on this step and go sleep. And um, So what did you do? Well, you know, I, there's, there's, there's like a, tray full of double espressos at the back of the stage that mm. I hit when when that happens. But it got me thinking about the Rolling Stones and them being oh, in their 80s. Yeah, yeah. Inexplicable. It's incredible, isn't it? Well, it, it, that's incredible. But then the, the splash that they made just recently with the releasing of the single, mm. uh, Angry, and the video, and just, just absolutely phenomenal that they get, that, that they can cause that still. But it, it's definitely, um, you know, was, uh, and then I, I get back on the plane and fly back to the UK. And then I, I just, you know, my, my head's caved and the negativity comes in. Mm. And I was writing about this on Instagram. Mm. And I just thought, I'm just going to start saying no to whatever bad yeah. thought is coming in. Mm. And I just spent 12 hours going, no, no, actually really and and strange things happen to me all the time all the time and i was um I, I was lying down and i'd got one ear in and one ear out and very nice ladies that were on the airlines and um she knelt down to give me this screen wipe from my computer which was nice and i'm sort of listening to the whatever's on the screen and she goes i love you <laughs> and I and I'm like, you know, like when you like that, 
eh? <laughs> and I went, um, thank you. No, no, no. I, I really love you. And off she went. <laughs> right. You must get that a lot, though. No, it's not. I don't get I... I love you. I really love you. <laughs> but I get, I get like odd stuff all yeah. the time where people have that. Yeah. You know, you you have it where people have this sort of mini, uh, uh, sort of like stroke in personality where they have like a mini personality stroke right, yeah. where they behave in a way yeah. that they they wouldn't normally. Yeah. But see, I think I get it at a very nice, lovely level. But yours is like off the scale. It's it's it, it must be well I know it, it it has been at times challenging for you and I watched because we want to talk about this Netflix this this four part documentary where you are looking back at 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 your life and at your achievements and even just in the trailer my God you've done some stuff you've 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 scaled some bloody heights haven't you. Yeah, you. I mean, you. I was just reminded of it. You know, in, in terms of the n number of records that you've sold and the size of those Nebworth shows. I mean, that's that's a phenomenal thing. So the amount of attention, as as I said earlier, I can't really begin to imagine what that's like. Well, fortunately, there's a four episode. <laughs> well, I won't have to imagine. It. I can watch yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's been. It's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. Uh, and, it, you know, it's that sort of classic story that you've heard a thousand times of somebody getting to the top of the mountain and, yeah. and realising there's nothing there. Yeah. Oh, it's a very familiar, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a morality tale. And it's happened to a boy who was something that shocked me. You were 21 when you left Take That. Yeah. I would have interviewed someone and said to me, well, that, they, well they were in their 30s then or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that age, you're going through that. And it all started because your mum or your auntie saw an advert that Nigel Martin-Smith had put in a paper. Is that how it began? Do you know what? I, I, I think it was Simon Mayo saying it on Radio 1 and my mum hearing about it from Simon Mayo on Radio 1. Well, he said that there were these auditions for, for a British for, New Kids. For a British New Kids on the block, right. yeah. Yeah. And um, I cobbled together a CV full of lies. Right. Have you done a CV full of lies? No. No, you've never had to. I'm a rule follower. Right, okay. I Are you really a rule follower? Yeah. Really? Yes. Proud rule follower. It's just it's to who I am, Robbie. Yeah. We are in London now in this gorgeous house. How often are you in this screening room? I don't have a screening room. I've always wondered if I had one. How often would I be in here? Um, it depends whether I'm addicted to the computer game FIFA or so not. So you play a video game on that huge screen? Yeah, I play a video game on that huge screen. The children are in here an awful lot. We're in with the children for Friday night, <coughs> Friday night cinema. Um, the kids love The Simpsons. Right. So a lot of The Simpsons happens here. Um, our, our life is um, constantly in flux and we are... Well, with travel, you mean? Yeah, with, with too many options. So where are your houses? Um, Not specific addresses, but, 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 but where are they? Los Angeles, London, Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a pop star? Oh, that's yeah. right. You are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah. Um, so you've got to keep three houses running. Yeah. That's yeah. big. Yeah, it is. That's expensive. Yeah, it is. It's too, it's too big. It's That's too expensive. It is. Uh, and it is having um, blessed options. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, our life What's is... happening in the Los Angeles house right now? Uh, is it all dark and quiet? No, there is eight dogs there. You've got American dogs got American that you dogs. only see when you're in America. Yeah. We, yeah. we got a puppy for the first time ever on Monday. Right. Really? Is that yes. your first dog? Yes. Other what than kind? Other than a golden retriever. Other than when I was a kid. Yeah. So for me to hear that you have eight dogs in another continent. Yeah. Do you have any dogs here? Uh, we've got two dogs here. They're the emotional support animals that can come on the plane. What breed are they? 
Uh, one's a... A Rottweiler. No, no, And no. a Bully XL. Yeah. One, one's a Havanese. They're both... They don't support your emotion. They threaten you. Yeah, yeah. Cheer up, Rob. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Bite your arse. Come on, you sad fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've so, got no, which ones are they? What Havanese people? and a Multipoo, two little ones. Wow, okay. But the, the Multipoo is um, 17 years old. Oh, that's yeah. old. She's game blind and she's, she's deaf. Um, but they can come on the plane with us, you see. I was going to say, but she's good with the kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you, they can come on the planes with you. What about Switzerland? Dog free? Dog free. Oh, okay. Figuring it out. But um, we, we have created a life and a lifestyle that is too big for us mm. and i think this can happen when people uh in my i don't know line of work yeah that's happened they go oh, i fancy doing that and i fancy doing yeah. that and, I fancy, and yeah. it's all it's all open to be able to do it and then i think eventually you go this is too much and then you just Streamline, and I think we're in the process of realizing that everything's a bit out of control. Yeah, because uh, you're not still in a more, better, best frame of mind, are you? You you must have seen the folly of that by now. More, better, best. Um, well, you I... must have by now, because you've done a lot of you've done a lot of introspection, haven't you? You've done a lot of work on yourself, so you must have realized that you know when it's when it's enough, and hey, things are great. No. <laughs> Well, no. you should. Yeah, I should. But um, there is not a an abyss in my soul yearning for the mourners. It's more that I need purpose and I need to put things in front of me to, to walk to. And I need a win. What, to distract you from? Well, I, I retired in 2006. Right. And um, I, I love making sweeping statements in my mind yeah. that, I, um, that I then have to believe fully. What was the thought behind retiring in 2006? I was just too big. It was just all too big, all yeah. too much. Yeah. And um, my, my, my psyche collapsed. Right. And, um, you know, the... The media was a different beast then, mm. and uh, there was no escape from being a very public figure wherever I went. And for somebody that's actually an introvert that has got depression, agoraphobia, um, uh, anxiety. But there'll be people now listening to this who say, oh, hang on, but, but so how can you go out there? Do you remember the, the, the Jubilee concert in 2012? I think... Well, I was one of the hosts. I think I was the host at the beginning, so it may have been me that said, and to start us off, it's Robbie Williams. Yeah. And they all went, yeah. And you came out, and they, I think there were guards people. Or da, 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 yeah. And you did let me entertain you. Yeah. How does that marry with anxiety, agoraphobia, and depression? How do you manage to push yourself out there? And you looked like you were born to it. Well, it's a massive blag. It's a huge blag. And um, one necessarily doesn't mean that the other one isn't happening. Uh, it, it, my, my professional life, I can muster up enough energy and bravado and um, showbiz wiles mm. to perform for six minutes at the Jubilee <laughs> and then go home and sort of, you know, you've... You've got loads of comedian friends. Yeah, yeah. But you know how yeah, yeah. dark and miserable yes, they are? Yes, <laughs> indeed. In, yeah, but I, but I want to make the distinction because what, what you do is different. And, you, you know, it's so bloody big and bad jong. Just energy. You know, we were talking, uh, so how old are you now? 49. 40, so you got 50. It's all downhill from 50, okay? Great. Take it from me. So the emotional strength to one side, what about the physical strength? So before you went on in Singapore, how do you pump yourself up? You're in six hour time difference. You've flown for 12 hours. It's a long way, Singapore. And you're there out there and then it all begins. Physically, what do you do? Mentally more than physically is that, um, like I've done shows this year with an abscess underneath my tooth, um, ingrowing toenail at the same time throwing up on stage. Um, 
I've come to learn as an older, as a veteran in pop music, that when it when my body says fight or flight, run off, I never actually died. <laughs> and, and I actually can perform under any circumstance, however I'm feeling. So it's not about pumping myself up. It's about knowing that um, I'm actually rock hard when it comes to performance. And what about your voice? I was thinking about this the other day. I was speaking to another singer and they were saying, does so, so your voice ever go? Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, never, never goes. But then I, and I felt really, you know, I felt I was bigging myself up about it. Yeah, yeah, it never goes. Then I realized that I only sing 35% of my choruses anyway and get the crowd to do the rest of it. <laughs> I, I realized that that's a t- I was like, oh, I, w- I wonder if that's because I... Do you look for moments when, when are you doing that consciously or you just want them singing along or are you thinking, oh, they, they can take this? Well, back in the day, yeah, it was more bravado and, you know, bravado and showmanship mm. and shithousery, basically, <laughs> you know. Um, but now it's more of a necessity yeah. as a 49-year-old. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've, I've, done, I've done an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 minutes, and now we're going to do a song of mine called Kids and Rock DJ. And then, you know, you, you're now into one hour 25. If you've been to the gym for one hour 25, yeah. you, you don't want, you know, your biggest rep and your biggest, yeah. you know, cardio vascular workout to yeah. be right at the yeah. end. So now it's more of a necessity than, um, you know, shithousery. Which songs take the most out of your voice? Well, let me entertain you is always at the start of the show. Yeah. And do you I, warm up? Uh yeah, I do. Vocally. I, I do a little bit of a warm up. And what would that involve? Me, 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 me. It would involve the everybody that sings in the band getting around a keyboard and uh our keyboard player uh playing scales. Yeah. And then we finish it with um just recently we've been singing Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis. Have you? Yeah. Right. Uh, my first gig, I can't remember it. But it was Show Waddy Waddy. Was it? Yeah. I used to buy their records. Yeah. And I wanted a teddy boy outfit. Yes. And my mum wouldn't get me a teddy boy outfit. And I can remember crying about it. I just left Take That at the time. <laughs> like the the um, I would probably be about six or seven. <laughs> yeah. So um, Show, Show Waddy Waddy was the first concert. Are you a big concert goer? Uh, less now. I go and see Bruce. I love Bruce Springsteen. So I, I've seen him three times this year. I, I think that a majority of my audience or a majority of the audience will come to see me to be entertained. Yes. And they won't be that familiar with my whole, you know. Well, with the they'll 14... just think, if we go and see Robbie Williams, we're going to have a great time. Yeah. Well, well hopefully that's what they think. Well, right. Sure so they do. so I, I do notice, and look, you know, I'm. I'm terrified most of the time and I'm terrified on stage. I know I don't look that way and I, I, I it's a unique blag that... Uh, so what's the commentary in your head while you're oh, singing? Oh, it's tightrope. It's t- totally tightrope all of the time. Well, that could have been and better. Oh, that, why, why did well, I do what? Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm losing them. I'm losing them. I've got them back. I've got them back. Yes. I've got them back. Hey, hey, oh, I did. That was a good... Oh, like, and to the camera and to the camera and go to the left. Now go to the left. Look out to the crowd. Look at that person. Do the thing and then do... And on this tour, I'm doing a lot of talking, which I really love. Yeah. And it's been going down very, very well because yeah. it's just like jokes and yeah, yeah, which is basically what I really want to do. And um, so, but basically, what you really want to do? I know. Was you love comedy? I love comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love comedy. And uh, so, it, it's. I'm always. I'm never in really in the moment. I'm always two or three steps ahead, and then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to pull this shape, and then I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to look over there, and then I'm going to do that, and down the camera. So. It's a hour and 50 or two hours of me constantly, I don't know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a mental workout that's happening all of the time. But is it a negative? Is it a negative commentary? Not, 
Uh, See, if I'm, I mean, if I'm doing a comedy gig, a stand-up gig, I'll have a thing in the back of my head going, oh, that wasn't very good. That was, but I've sort of, I just live with it. And, w- and when I hear people talk about, oh, it's all right, I kind of go, well, I think I have that. But I just go, yeah, okay, you, 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 can, you can sit there if you want to. That's I, all right. I, I, it used to overwhelm me, but now it's not driving the car. Right. Yeah. So okay. where, whereas before, it's, it's just in the car with you. You're driving, and yeah, now yeah, it'll I, say, yeah, yeah, that, that, that. And he'll sometimes say, "Oh, that was good. Oh, you that that was. Oh, you got that. Just that was just right." Well, what 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 can happen with me is that sometimes I go out and Robbie Williams doesn't turn up, and Robert <laughs> has to do it, and I'm like, and you, and it's the weirdest sensation. <laughs> Because I, I go out to let me entertain you and I look as though I'm the cock of the school and, yeah. you know, uh, there's this massive bravado and you're very, very lucky to be in my company, you know, and and then I can just go, oh, oh, he's not here. It's not here. So what happens then? Well, then I have to wait for him to turn up and he always turns up. <laughs> but it can be he? like three or four or five songs and then really, he really, really. turns up. Yeah, really, yeah. Really? But then it's a... Um, each audience, each 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 uh, audience is a different bag, as you know. Yes, 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 yes. And you can be just storming along, yes, being received incredibly well with this fever and this love and this, you know, happiness that somehow you are managing to create for these people. And then one night you can go out, and it's just, wow. Oh. It's not here, it's not here, yeah. ah, it's not here, why is it not here?